I have a job. It's more than a job. It's a life changer. Look, this is me. This is you. This is the money. This is the bag. You get the bag. This is vitally important. You do not look in this bag. You do not open this bag. You do not even take a little peek. Bring this bag to me. I give you the money. Hey, I'm Patrick Mazel. I'm a location scout, film motel, and we're in New Orleans, and this is behind the scenes. Dirty money, dirty little town. Dirty money gonna bring me down. Actually, living and breathing the New Orleans culture is a whole different ballgame. I have to say, shooting down in New Orleans and Louisiana, that's very special. I think, you know, I think Chicago, my hometown, is a very special city. New York's a very special city. Uh, but New Orleans, there's just no place like it. How about that for an entrance? Dragna's such a colorful, vibrant, dark character. Dragna's um, specter looms over everyone in the film, almost like uh, some sort of uh, demon. We try to make it somewhat unique and try to try to avoid sort of the typical mafia boss type situation. Certainly, the the dialogue we try to match with the master of the game. We were really excited when we learned that Robert De Niro was uh, was responding to the script to play Dragnet. Once we had that that idea in our in our minds, it was hard to imagine someone else playing him. The, the dialogue reminds me of David's rhythm sometimes that he probably had something to do with the writing of those scenes, which and and it has a certain dry British sort of mm. ironic thing about it, which is, is good. When the picture was finally greenlit, we engaged writer Paul Conway to help really polish the script. And then he started collaborating with David Grovick, who David really turned the script upside down and really opened it up and, and made it more of a dynamic picture, um, catering to Robert De Niro and, and John Cusack. He very much liked the, the writing, particularly for his character. And I think uh, the results are for us all to, to see and admire. It's a classic crime noir thriller. Some would say for somebody to be that beautiful and that talented, you know, really isn't fair. It gave me so much freedom and, you know, so much room to create and he's just the most generous person I ever met. I mean, I'm just so grateful. He has given me the chance of a lifetime. I swear to God, I couldn't be more lucky than I was. Starting from John Cusack, he was really, really nice. He's a very passionate human being. He loves what he does and he, he's an artist. So for me, when you work with people like that, you gotta push yourself to the best you can be because otherwise you're left behind. She's got a very super intuitive quality um, as an actress and as a person. I feel that the actors should be given a blank sheet of paper, mm. provided that the sheet of paper comes out of the same book mm. that, that, that one's, one's look, looking to make. What are you? Sticky Fingers from the hip hop band Onyx came on board and joined Martin Kleba to play the role of the, uh, the thugs. Yeah. You know, yeah, we basically could play two psychopaths in this movie, two psychopimps. Go. That's what you get for messing with my woman. And afterwards, carry his body in the woods and hide it. Yeah, my character's, uh, they call him Guano, which means fat shit. Um, and my partner's name is Lizard. We're, uh, we're out to, um, we're, we're just a one group that's trying to uh, assassinate uh, Mr. Cusack's character. You kidding? 
No, I'll shoot him. I'll shoot him. I'll shoot him. Then you carry him. I should shoot your little munchkin ass too. And you'd only have more to carry. I'm the first guy, of course, to get to see the movie because I draw it. And so that's one of the advantages of storyboarding something is, is you get a little bit of a visual image on how things are going to happen before they happen. And what you got to do is you got to go from script to camera. And most people just cut to the front of the line and just go straight to camera. Um, but you have to visualize something first. So it has to go from the intelligent medium, which is words, to something existential like a visual image. We had a very tricky series of motions for a particular stunt in a car. So we have a moving car being driven, driven first by the character Lizard. Ah! He's just kicked Jack partway out of the car. The amount of detail that the car stunt required with Lizard was, was extraordinary. Uh, from storyboarding, computer generated imagery of the actual stunt, to all the work our stunt team and special effects team did on a stage prior to the day or days of shooting that scene. The, during this fight that happens, they actually switch places. Uh, Rebecca's in the back seat, she's tied up, and she, but she gets her long, those very long, long legs over the bench seat and starts choking him. And I'm just keeping my hand in there. Uh, so there was a lot of effort to try to get that to work as much as we could. Clearly, after this film comes out, people will recognize Rebecca as an action star. I like, I've done yeah. sports my entire life, and I like to be active. I mean, I've just done the one scene with, with, with Rebecca. She has a lot of charisma and a lot of strength. I mean, I think that's the one thing that I've noticed with Rebecca. She's Brazilian and she's fiery. You can, you can sense that she's, she's full of passion and she's unafraid. So for me, it was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it because, you know, that's who she is. That's who I am now. So there's no point of, you know, I can jump, I can kick ass and like the little things, yeah. the most fabulous production designer, um, Dennis Washington and Dennis's team. Talking to David where he wanted uh, sort of a noirish feel and, you know, a little bit of gritty feel and a piece that's just a little on the edge of the universe. It's a, it's a little out of reality, you know, so it gives us a chance, gives me a chance to kind of take things a little, a little beyond what we mm -hmm. normally do. Dennis Washington and our production design team did a really good job developing the world we were gonna live in during the picture. It was an elaborate production because we're dealing with the rain season in Louisiana. So we had a covered set. We actually built an identical motel on a stage. So we balanced between the exterior of the original motel and the interiors of our stage motel. You have to imagine being in this high 90 degree heat, 24 hours a day, battling these dinosaur mosquitoes, standing in a swamp at 3 a.m. in the morning with animal wranglers at the ready to keep you from harm, from poisonous snakes, alligators. It was definitely an intense experience. You're going to be in room number six. I did enjoy working with David, and I think that uh, I know that he got what he wanted. I genuinely really liked the amount of uh, time that we were able to take. That doesn't always happen. As opposed to, to cutting after each take, we would do, yeah, a series of three. And you can give nuances and try different attacks. When we were shooting on Broadway, we had 13 or 14 taxi cabs. We had a techno crane on Broadway Avenue, and the shot started at street level, and we lifted up, focused on the Monte Carlo. The traffic was live, and the shot that David envisioned was to see Jack and Rivka merge into a sea of taxis. And we got that shot. You know I'm not lying. Oh, I know. Trust me. Be all over your face. Yeah. 